Hello, smart investors. I hope you're doing good. My name is Gabriel Jarrison. I'm from beautiful Paris, France. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Milthy, currently raising money on republic.co. I'm going to look at the company with my investment criteria. I have them right here. Before we start, if it is your first time here, if it's not yet the case, I'd like to invite you to hit the subscribe button right below this video to subscribe to my YouTube channel, get all the latest videos, the latest uh, analysis of startups and to join the smart investors community. Let's go. All right, so here I am on Republic's website. This is the Milthy page. They're raising uh, money for the next 58 days. I'm also here with my investment criteria. Um, so I'm going to use them to look at the startup, to analyze the company. If you do not know about those investment criteria, if it's the first time that you see them, before we start, I advise you to read the complete document where I explain all of them. It's just a few pages. You can download it here below the video in the description. You can download it for free, obviously. And just give me your email. I'll send it to you right away. You can read the document, see what I mean by those words, because right here you just have the words. You can actually see what I mean by those terms and understand it better. And that way you can understand the video and my analysis much better. Also, before we start, let me remind you, this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. Please make your own research and take your own decisions. All right, here we go. So as usual, I've watched the video here, but I haven't taken the time to do a deep dive in the company because I want to do this live with you. I want to show you my process, show you how I'm looking for the information and put myself in the shoes of a, a retail investor here on the website for the first time. So the minimum investment is $100. The valuation is $30 million with a 20% discount on the crowd safe. So basically it means that you're going to have a 20% discount. So the max valuation that you will have is actually $26 million. So 20% less than the 30 million, um, 26, uh, three and three, six, 24 million dollars. Sorry, my bad math. Oh my God. All right. So what is Melfi? Basically it's, a. uh, uh, uh supplier creator of this uh, um, of this thing it's a cooker uh, to cook at home easily it's it does all the recipes for you. you just have to put the food inside basically and use the app and that's it um, they have six million dollars in revenue for the first years of sales the the number two multipot num number two bestseller on Amazon so pretty good for the first year also uh, they've got a bunch of awards and stuff like that so what am I going to, what do I know immediately from this very, very short introduction? Well, first of all, I know that they have good traction, 6 million for the first year. I mean, it's obviously very good. Um, I also know that they don't have uh, the scalability that I want in the way that they're a hardware product and I only like to invest in software. So this is just because they're hardware and that's it. Like there's, there's nothing they can do about it. But for me, it means that the scalability is going to be more difficult than with software. Basically with software, when you have to scale, you just buy a little bit more servers and that's it. But for hardware, if you want to sell twice as many milky cookers, milky pots, milky multipot, you have to produce twice as much and you have to buy twice as much uh, 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 inventory and, and to produce it with the factory and have twice as many workers do the job and stuff like that. So there's no scalability, all right? Uh, monetization, of course, is very easy here. They know how to monetize. Basically, they sell you the, the multipod. Very easy. Uh, let's look at the team, the market, and the unfair advantage. All right. The market, as they said, is pretty big and it's growing. The market is uh, 155 billion small kitchen appliance market. And that's probably just in the US. But now they're going into Mexico, UK, Europe, India, South America, and South Africa. So there's a huge potential. And I'm guessing that the market is at least stable and probably growing because you have more and more people getting uh, um, more money in the in the world and wanting to eat better food, better meals, home cooked, stuff like that. So I'm guessing the market is good. So this is a green point here. Uh, let's talk about the unfair advantage because it's going to tie into the valuation. I think the valuation of 30 million is pretty high or even 24 for only 6 million in revenue. Um, that being said, as I say in every video, I'm more used to the European valuations, which are lower than the US valuation. This is a US valuation. And also if they have proprietary uh, uh, stuff about the, the multipod, that would mean that 
proprietary. So they have a, a proprietary non-stick surface on the frying pan and that's it. All right. So this is the next things that they're going to launch. The glass tea kettle, the air fryer, the blender, uh, the milky crisp lid. And that's the product roadmap. Uh, but I'm not sure if they have uh, something proprietary about this one. So they do sell a lot of it because it retails for $129 and uh, they sold $6 million of it. So that's pretty good. But there's no nothing proprietary, all right? So I'm going to say that the mon uh, valuation is a little high for me, a little, a little rich uh, for what I would expect, all right? And I'm gonna say that there's no unfair, all right, I'm gonna say that there is and there isn't an unfair advantage. So on that kind of companies, you really like when there's, once again, IP, something that you can, a patent or something like, yeah. So with them, there isn't. What I saw in the video is almost all of their traffic is organic traffic, and that's pretty good, because it means it's pretty, e uh, pretty hard, yeah, Visitors per month, 100% organic traffic. So that's pretty good because it means they have a brand established out there. People know about them. And this is kind of hard to replicate. If you want to do the same, you have to get yourself known and famous and, and in, in, the, in the field, in the market. So that's, this is a small unfair advantage. Their first sales is also a small unfair advantage, but it's not that big. So that's why I'm saying, yeah, there kind of is, but also there kind of isn't. All right. So it's kind of and it's okay, I'm allowed to do both. I don't have to choose between one. It's, it's a gray area situation, all right? Uh, the products are, are of great quality, of course. The customers do love the blah, 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 the flagship, the flagship product, the brand, uh, the roadmap, we've seen that. What else? So the, gro the, the, the growth is, is exploding, so that's a real good point here about traction. I'm even gonna yeah, give it a double green point. It's really, really growing. The sales are growing. Let's talk about the team, all right? So there's a lot of people here. Uh, the CEO is Bernardo de la Vega, serial entrepreneur. He founded Rada Beauty, an online digital beauty product, um, and he sold it. So that's really good. I love when I have an entrepreneur who's experienced and who already sold a company, uh, but it looks like he might be the only one, uh, the only... So Heng Kei He is chief product engineer in China. Jennifer is head of product and content. Anna is head of marketing. But, 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 but. It seems like he's the only shareholder. Let's see here in the comments if someone asked the question. Someone asked the question before. So I'm opening all the comments here. Shareholder, no. Share something. You can share the benefit. How many shares do you get? Do, do, do. Nope, it seems like, yeah, I think he's the only shareholder and that's kind of a problem for me. Um, so even though, yeah, that's it, right? Founder and they're under the, yeah. So that's a problem for me. He seems really, really experienced and, and knowledgeable and he sold his first company and that's like really all you can dream of, but he's a solo founder and that's kind of a negative point for me, all right? Uh, so I'm going to give it a skincare and essential oils on amazon.com. So he really knows how to do the Amazon thing. All right. So I'm going to give it also like here, a very good for this guy. His name is uh, Bernardo, Bernardo, but uh, this is for the fact that he seems to be the only one. All right. With that being said, I'm only looking for the margin now. What's the margin like? Would you consider yourselves more a tank when you manufacture in terms of margin and ability to connect with your customer? Let's see his answer. We consider ourselves a food, media, and kitchen appliance focused on providing the best customer experience. By this, I mean that while our sole source of revenue is our physical product, we believe we stand above the competition because we're also a media company. We continue to focus, blah, blah, blah. How much is the margin per unit? We cannot disclose our current margins. But as mentioned in previous answer, we have our margins significantly improved. So that's also a big problem because he does not disclose the margins, which makes me thing that is really, really shitty and mm -mm, and that is a problem. Uh, probably that's why he's able to sell for such a cheap price and to acquire so many customers. It's because he's not making any money. So if you're not making money and selling with no margin, 
it's so the question was are current margins sustainable for the growth of the business which is basically what we want to know and i'm sure he said no but in a kind of political way let's see there are a lot of upfront and one-time costs when you are launching a kitchen appliance company on a product like a pressure cooker as well as operational efficiencies that get improved as our volume increase we expect our margins to significantly improve this year as we have optimized our manufacturing efforts and are launching multiple new products with even better margins so that's going to be a big no-no for the margins probably if uh, so his idea is his idea and i think it's good is to get to scale quickly and to produce much much more and with that you can actually have better margins but we are investing today with the with the today's margins and it seems like they are no good no bueno so i'm going to say a no for the margins here all right so this is it for my analysis of milthy as always, if you want to know whether I'm investing or not in that company, you are welcome to join my private, my private investment club. The link is below in the description. In that club, I will tell you which of this company I invest my own money into and which of them I don't invest into. And I will tell you why I invest. I will tell you I am investing in Milthy because or I am not investing in Milthy because. And don't get fooled by those red and or green dots uh it's not because it has some red that i won't invest and it's not because it's only green it happens sometimes that i will invest all right it really depends so if you want to know the answer the answer is in my private investment group in my private investment club the link is below you are more than welcome to join that being said thank you for watching the video if you liked it please like it and share it also if you're not yet subscribed to the youtube channel of leonist investor secrets please do so right now it will help me to do more videos and to grow this community. Thank you for watching and talk soon. Bye.